When you can't use the swimming pool because of the virus, head to nature's big pools. Our rivers, sea and lakes are not too cold if you have the right kit and the right advice. Start swimming open water earlier this year. In this video, seven tips to get you started. If you're new here, I make adventure swimming and adventure cycling videos, mainly in the Scottish Highlands where I live, plus cycling tips and reviews. Please subscribe and I'll try to give you ideas and keep you entertained. Beginning with seven tips to start wild swimming in cold water. The warmest swimming wetsuit is the one which fits tightest all over. It has to trap a layer of water and if it constantly flushes with cold water you will get cold. I find the cut of the blue 70 thermal reaction suits my body shape, so does Liz, but I know they're not for everyone. One advantage these have is that as well as the usual 5mm of neoprene there's this orange slightly fleecy layer and this seems to add about 3 degrees of warmth. To find what fit best, we bought loads on a credit card from companies that offered free returns, then sent them back for refunds before the bills became due. And when you're trying them on, they must be tight, almost too tight at first, because they will stretch with use. If your wetsuit has stretch, like this one has on me, wear a neoprene vest underneath to trap water. If it's baggy at the crotch, wear neoprene shorts. One thing to say about a tight wetsuit is that you are more likely to get some kind of chafing around your neck, so it's worth using some anti-chafe product. This is called Skur Skin, it's brand new and it's made here in Scotland. It's environmentally sensitive, no plastic packaging, really good stuff. When you're putting on a tight wetsuit, always wear soft gloves to avoid ripping the wetsuit, especially at the shoulders, which is so easily done. It often starts with tiny half-moon tears in the neoprene your nails inevitably make. I've had so many of those which you have to repair before they get much bigger. A pair of soft gloves can save a lot of grief. And yet, even with these, I've just found two holes on the back of my leg that I'm going to have to fix when I get home. We've tried several different brands of gloves. When it's not too cold, I like the pre-bent shape of the hoob gloves. Uh, they seem to promote a good catch. Zone 3 have a, a good set. They've got a good wrist system, wrist closure system with a bit of Velcro on it. But below 10 Celsius, I still find Lomo gloves the best. They're very tight with a good wrist gasket. Other people find they're filled with water, so I guess we're all different shapes. Lomo also do warm socks. I wear two pair. The under socks don't have a gasket, the outer, and they're cheaper. The outer socks are tight and they help keep the water out. Key point for both wrists and ankles, the wetsuit goes on top of both the gloves and the socks. Without earplugs, I feel seasick in cold water. It seems to mess with my inner ear. Lots of brands available from putty to small types. I'm always trying to get stuck. These ones are on a cord and they come out pretty easily. I swim better when I'm warm, so I wear three caps. I know my friends will laugh at this. Uh, I have a two millimeter neoprene cap underneath. And then on top of that, I stick a blue 70 cap with, has the same material as my wetsuit. And then kind of to seal the edges up, I will put a regular swim cap on top. Now all this is too much for Liz. She finds all this way too tight, but hey, it works for me. Sudden immersion, jumping in is really not good for you. Your body can gasp at the cold shock if you're under the water when that happens well it's not a good thing so do some arm exercises to to warm up first splash some water on your face just to get your body used to the idea that you're going to be getting cold one tip i was given is to and this takes a bit of courage to get some cold water down your wetsuit oh, oh. Then get out again and squeeze the wetsuit against your body. <laughs> uh, and that way the wetsuit will stick to you. Uh, and when you're swimming, 
it's less likely to flush with cold water. Oh, it certainly lets you know what's ahead. The official advice is to never swim alone and to leave a person on shore, but that's not always practical. You'll notice I'm towing a float bag. In there I have my phone in a waterproof case, an emergency foil bivy bag and a personal locator beacon, a PLB. I made a video all about PLBs for wilderness cycling. In an emergency I press a button and an SOS is sent to the UK Coast Guard. It's like dialing 999. It's a bouncy day! A bouncy day! On windy days like this, I prefer to swim without a tow float because when you're running downwind with the waves behind you, it can overtake you and it can get tangled up with your arms and legs and be more trouble than it's worth. When the water temperature is below 6 Celsius as today, I keep a close eye on my watch and limit my time in the water. Well, that was good. Now. It's all about warming up gradually. Get warm clothing on. Robes designed to go over wetsuits are excellent. Don't leave your head uncovered. A car heater is a good gradual way to warm up. The warm blood from your core should spread slowly to your periphery because it cools as it circulates and it can drop four degrees in temperature. That cold blood would go back to your core too quickly. If you jumped in a hot shower or a bath, it causes what's called after drop. That can make you feel faint and cause a drop in blood pressure. Uh, a warm drink can also be beneficial. Because cooling blood is circulating back to your core, you'll probably start to shiver as you warm up. That's normal. Feeling faint due to a drop in blood pressure is not normal. If you're quite a distance from home, it's best to get out of your wet wetsuit because this is trapping cold water next to your skin. We found that a gardening trug is a good way of carrying back a pile of soggy neoprene. If you are going to drive home in your wetsuit, you'll find that the water gradually runs down your legs and it would just fill up the car. Um, if you get some cut off old Wellington boots and pull them on, it'll fill up the wellies and you'll end up with wet wellies rather than a soaking wet car. Your kit will work better for longer if you dunk it in fresh water to get the salt off, then hang it to dry. These clip hangers we bought on Amazon are the best of many we've tried. All links are in the video description. Hopefully these tips will get you started safely in cold water. Give me a thumbs up please and for swimming and cycling videos subscribe to my channel. If you can't get to the chlorine pit, the pool, and you're keeping away from other people, head to a big pool near you. Wild swimming can be mental salvation at a stressful time. Until next time. Bye.